Okay, so now we're going to go into a part of the lesson showing you uh, the culminating war, the last world war. Okay, that's going to culminate to the last world war real quick. Before I go there, of course, to preference this, we must go back to, the, to a few lessons in which I, we spoke of the fallen angels that were bound from the beginning. If you have no understanding of the fallen angels that, that fell in the beginning and believe that that never really happened, then you have no concept of the governments of the earth that, that's set up to be judged. Because all the governments of this earth today are being led by those fallen gods. Okay? It was prophesied in scripture that the gods that will rule the kings of the earth would eventually be released from hell. And through that, teach the government certain, techno government certain technology so that they can join together and fight against the coming of Christ. So that's what the New World Order is really about. It's not really about having everyone under one system. That's just, the, that's just a result of them building the One World Order. But the One World Order is an actual agenda to fight against the coming of Christ. That's what the New World Order is. To have all people in one mind under Lucifer to continue with his agenda. And let's get his agenda, then I'm going to show you that the kings of the earth are now released from the Middle East. And when those, when, when those kings were released from out of hell, they became leaders over all the governments of the earth today. So who do you, uh, this is what's going on, brothers and sisters. There's demons and fallen angels as top kings over every nation outside of Israel. Again, fallen angels and demons are the kings of every nation. Their order is to get all their people in one worship one understanding under their real God, Lucifer, to fight against Christ. Why? Because, brothers and sisters, keep in mind, I'm an Israelite. My God don't exist as a king on this earth. So we are without a king physically on this earth. But the nations have their kings. Who do you think are giving them their technology, their ingenuity, their understanding of how to rule? They're not just going to school learning this. It's their fathers, their leaders are giving them their power and technology and rule. Being that we are the children of Israel scattered amongst them, we are a threat to their existence. They understand the prophecies concerning us. And all their weaponry that they create is to uphold the nations that have enslaved us and to destroy us before the coming of Christ. We have no God or no physical leader in this earth. We have no elected official that represents us in this earth. Let's get it real quick. Let's get the one where it says, no God, we, no, we weren't appointed a God in this earth. Uh, this is Ecclesiasticus in the Apocrypha. We're in the Apocrypha. Chapter 17, verse 17. 17 and 17. This is actually a part of the regular King James Version Bible. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, Ecclesiasticus chapter 17, verse 17. Go ahead. For in the division of the nations of the whole earth, he set a ruler over every people. So the Most High set a ruler over every people. Read. But Israel is the Lord's portion. But we belong to the Most High. There's no ruler over us. You're going to find out the ruler that was set over every nation 
is a God. That's why all these nations have idols, that rep which is a physical representation of the God they serve, the ruler of that particular nation. Let's go to Psalms 82 real quick. Psalms 82 and 1. See, and this is why Christ told the Pharisees and scribes, ye are of your father the devil, and the, and, and the lust of your father ye will, do, ye will do. You were a murderer from the beginning, because Cain followed Satan. That was his ruler. They tell you that in Genesis, the fourth chapter. So by the time Christ came on the scene, the Sanhedrin was infiltrated. And the Gentile, which you would call the Idumean princes of Edom, had a position as Jews. But they were serving their God, Lucifer, Satan. Let's get it. Psalms 82 to show you from the beginning of creation. Before there was an earth, the Most High did an appointment. Read. Uh, Psalms 82 verse 1. Go ahead. The Most High standeth in the congregation of the mighty. The Most High stand in the congregation of the mighty. He, that's him standing from the heavenly realm. The congregation of the mighty are the angels in his presence. Read. He judgeth among the gods. He judgeth among the what? He judgeth among the gods. Now mind you, there's gods amongst the Most High. But he didn't appoint a ruler over us. He himself ruled us. And he sent his son Yeshia to show the path back to him. He judgeth among the gods. Plural. So there's gods, angels. Read. How long will ye, will ye unjustly, and us lock it, verse 2. How long will ye unjustly and accept, how long will ye judge unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked? How long will you judge unjustly? At one point, uh, the majority of people thought that it was speaking of Israel. And it was actually speaking of angels, gods, that were operating unrighteously outside of the order the Most High gave them. Let me show you. Read. And accept the persons of the wicked. Salah. Defend the poor and fatherless. The angels were supposed to do what? Defend the poor and fatherless. Defend the poor and fatherless. Do just justice to the afflicted and needy. Deliver the poor and needy. Rid them out of the hand of the wicked. They know not. Neither will they understand. They know not. Neither will they understand. Read. They walk on in darkness. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. Read. Uh, verse 6. When it says they walk in darkness, the angels that came to this earth were bound in profound darkness. Read. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. Go on. Verse 6. I have said ye are gods. He said ye were, ye were what? Ye are gods. Ye are gods. And all of you are children of the Most High. Because the angels were the first children of the Most High before the earth was created. Read. But ye shall die like men. But ye shall die like men. And fall like one of the princes. Arise, O God, judge the earth, for thou shalt inherit all nations. Now, as you can see, this is speaking from the throne, that these gods would fall like men in the earth as princes. So a lot of people don't understand that when these gods fell, they were made ruler and judges over the earth before the flood. These are the rulers and leaders over all governments today. That are fighting against our God. That have a long term agenda. To get back to the heavenly throne. So when you see these gods are worshipped all through the earth brothers and sisters in these different nations. Understand that it's not just a, a practice or a religion. These are actual entities. That once had a position 
in the heavens. They gave man technology. They gave man uh, 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 of ingenuity to perform miracles and all this. Which you would call sorcery or high magic. It's them. Let's go to Galatians 6 real quick. Ephesians. Ephesians. Ephesians 6, yes. 6 and 12. And how does this lead to the battle of Armageddon? Well, brothers and sisters, the battle of Armageddon and all nations coming together under one army that's already formed under the UN is to fight against Christ. The first war is against man to get all people together with the agenda first. To kill off all the adversaries against the agenda. That's the first order of the New World Order. But once they got all the people with their agenda, then they're going to come under a higher order to fight in the heavens. Uh, Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12. Let's read it. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, brothers and sisters. Our fight is not against flesh and blood. Read. But against powers. Against powers, which we know are gods. Read. Uh, lock it. But against principalities. Principalities. Against powers. Powers are gods. Against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Hold up. So if we're not wrestling with flesh and blood. But principalities and gods, read. But against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Who is actually ruling the White House, brothers and sisters? You think it's Obama? Who's ruling the nations? Who's giving them their agenda? It's not flesh and blood. It's no one you elected. Who set up the Masonic seats over the earth? with an agenda. They don't have flesh and blood, brothers and sisters. Who are they then if we're not wrestling against flesh and blood? And I'm putting this out there because you have so many people out there claiming that the fallen angels story is a myth. It never happened. Who's ruling the world that's not flesh and blood right now? That's against the Most High. Who are they? Read. Uh, verse, the because rest of verse 12. The, the, wrestle, the wrestling cannot be against flesh and blood. Why? You can move one guy out of the way and they'll just replace it with another guy. But the agenda stands. Who's bringing forth the agenda? Who's the ruler that's setting the agenda for the world governments? You can't say it's people because one man die and another man is replaced and the agenda continues. This is an ancient agenda. Read. Uh, the rest of verse 12. Against spiritual wickedness in high places. Against, uh, we're really wrestling against spiritual wickedness in high places. See? When Christ returns, he's going to bind, he's going to bind their strong man. He's going to bind Satan for what? A thousand years. You can't take the house unless you first bond the strong man. Satan, Lucifer, is not by himself. There's many gods that fell with him that are the rulers of nations today. This is who we're contending against. This is who we're praying against. Think about it. You think mankind came up with this idea of how to do certain things in this earth? Just man? To think about it. To systematically set up an agenda and say, you know what? Let's see if we can make a poison that we can give everybody that will only affect them. <laughs> this is ancient sorcery from the fallen angels. That's, who's, that's, this, that's who the battle is against. That's who's over science today. Finish reading. Uh, verse 13. Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of the Most High. So now we must take the whole armor of the Most High because our battle is not physical. 
The people they're putting before you as politicians and all that are only figureheads. They're only holding the physical, the fleshly positions to bring forth the agenda. But they, they're replaceable. But what's constant? The gods that rule this earth. You're going to find that these gods were bound and a lot of them have been loose to finish their agenda. That's why there's so much chaos in the earth today. That's why technology has ramped up a thousandfold. We are right where we were before the flood. We are right there. We're on the precipice of the Most High saying it's over, no more. Because they have been released. And with them, their children, they release the demons that will be used to go into people to help with their agenda. And that's why they have ramped up this what you would call a, a mental health health agenda. So that people are not perplexed to say it's more crazy people than we've, we're used to seeing now. Make you think that crazy is normal when people are demon possessed. Let's go to Revelation 16 and 12 real quick. Before we go there, let's go to Isaiah real quick to show you Satan's agenda. What his plan is and how that ties into all the armies coming together at the very end. Huh? Yeah. Thank you. You got it? Uh, yes, sir. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12. Read. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which did its weaken the nations? How did you fall from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How would thy cut down that did weaken the nations? Now the nations are flesh and blood. So who's weakening the nations? Read. Uh, uh, 13. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into the heights of the clouds. Lucifer said when he was hurled from the heavenly realm that he would do what? Aslach. I will ascend into heaven. He will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. And he will exalt his throne up upon the thrones of the Most High. So he promised to go back out into the heavenly realm. To go back into space. Read. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. He's I'm talking about going back to the heavenly realm and assuming his original position. Read. 14. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. So eventually he will be bound like it says in Revelations. Who will bind him? Christ. So he's not by himself. Let's go to the book of Jude 1 and 6. This is how you, you're able to break down revelations and get some understanding of revelations when you read certain things. So we're going there now. We're going into Jude, then revelations, and go to the prophecy of all nations coming together. And guess what? At the very end, when all the whole New World Order army comes together, guess who they're going to eventually try to come up against? You will never guess. Before they fight against Christ, they're going, to all, they're going to all join together with the remnant that's left here to be changed before Christ comes. I mean, when Christ returns. So they're going to set their sight on the wilderness where the Most High have some protected in the wilderness. So the New World Order agenda is before we fight against them out in space, we must first destroy the children of Israel in the earth. That's the agenda, brothers and sisters. That's the agenda. It's about power and rulership. They're, Satan's time is almost over. So they're ramping up their program to destroy us. Read it. Uh, Jude 1 and 6. Go ahead. And the angels which kept not their first estate. And the angels which kept not their first estate. But left their own habitation. But left their own habitation because we know angels are from the heavens. They left their habitation. It tells us 
how they left their habitation in Genesis 6, Genesis the sixth chapter, which says, when the sons of God came and dealt with the daughters of men. Read. He are preserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. So here it is. A lot of them were bound. The key, the chief of them that was bound, whose name is hidden in, in Egyptology as Osiris, is Azazel, the fallen angel, the scapegoat. He's under the Great Pyramid Giza, buried. Now, some were released during our time, according to prophecy. Let's go there. Let's go to Revelations. The 16th chapter, let's read the 12th verse. Revelations chapter 16 verse 12 and the sixth angel poured out his vial and the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates upon the great river Euphrates and the water thereof was dried up and the waters thereof was dried up now we know that as we speak you can actually go online and see it the river Euphrates is getting lower every day every day they're showing it from year to year it's going lower and lower and lower showing you the prophecies are right on upon the great river euphrates and, and the water thereof was dried up that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared so this is an impending battle at the very end and think about this, brothers and sisters. Think about this. Isn't the river Euphrates one of the original four rivers that came out of the garden? The waters that, got, that, that, that came from the, the realm of the garden that actually watered the whole earth? The Most High is drying it up. See? And those now because there was an there's an imprint from where the waters used to be these will be roads used on this earth for the final battle within this earth you're going to find that all these kings of the earth or what you call the un are coming together to not only destroy certain countries but once they got their agenda in place they're going to look to get us out of the way once and for all it's, they're not going to try to fight us through stealth anymore or through propaganda or through side. They're using sideways ways agendas to try to get us. Oh, yeah, they're in jail. They're doing crimes. We're going to put them in jail. Oh, we're going to vaccine them, get them. No, nah, they're going to come straight at us physically. They're going to come at us. No more battle, battle, in the, battle battle in us sideways. But listen to this clearly. I want y'all to see this concerning the kings of this earth. Listen to this clearly. Uh, 13. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. And we know the mouth of the false prophet is the spirit that's in who? The Pope, which goes from Pope to Pope. Read. 14. For they are the spirits of devils. Of devils. Working miracles. What type of miracles? Read. Which go forth unto the kings of the earth and the whole world. Hold up. They go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world. To gather them to the battle of the great day of the Most High Ahia Almighty. So now, these spirits are being released and have appointments to go over kings with an agenda. There go your new world order. So who's over people? Devils, demons are controlling all governments. Read it again. 
Uh, verse 14. For they are the spirits of devils, working miracles, which go for... What miracles? It's the technology that they're given governments. That's the miracles. It's the technology they're given governments. The planes, the weaponry, the ingenuity. That's the miracles they've given people. Science. So these are the real leaders over governments. They're demons. We wrestle not with flesh and blood. Read. And, and think about it, brothers and sisters. Why do you think? And I, I said it before. They showed it on that movie, Eyes Wide Shut. All your elected officials and those in high positions dress up at midnight with all red on and black and doing seances at midnight to some gods. What do you think that's about? These parties that most are not invited in which they're doing ritualistic magic and all types of activity to gods. To show you that they are paying homage to a higher power. Lucifer and the fallen angels and their children, demons. Who are controlling and ruling this earth. Read the next verse, Lloyd. Uh, this is the rest of verse 14. Which go forth unto the kings of the earth and the whole world to gather them to the battle of the great day of the Most High, Ahia Almighty. So there's an agenda. Now we see the New World Order agenda. The overall agenda is to get all the nations together for a final battle. See, that's the new world order. That's the new world order. An impending battle. Now, let's go to Ezekiel 38 real quick. There's more in Revelations, but we're dealing with time. Let's get Ezekiel 38. And I need you to get real quick, uh, Brother Shapat. I need you to grab real quick Gog and Magog in the Hebrew real quick on, on the sword there. You got it? Give me Gog, the definition of Gog first. Uh, Gog, Hebrew 1463. Of uncertain derivative, Gog, the name of an Israelite, also of some northern nation. Okay, we know that's not an Israelite here. That's a northern nation, right? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Magog, Magog, Hebrew 4031. Uh, Magog, a son of Japheth. A son of Japheth. That's also, the key. Yeah. Also a barbarous northern region. Hey, Magog. That's it. We're going to show you who that is. Let's go to Ezekiel 38 to show you the, the battle that's being prepared. Ezekiel chapter 38, verse 1. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against God. Set in, thy face against God. In the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshech and Tubal, and prophesy against him. And prophesy against him. Now, when you look at this prophecy, Gog is a country of the north, and Magog is who? One of the sons of Japheth. Now, and how, does, how, how does that play prominent in our in our current time. Well, we know that Japhetic people are who? Majority is Chinese. And the key Japhetic son that's still in place in that size of the north as we speak this day is who? Iran. The Iranians are not what you would call Arabians. 
The Iranians are the sons of Japheth. Read. Uh, verse 3. And say, Thus saith the Most High, Power. Behold, I am against thee, O God, the chief prince of Meshech and Tubal. And I will turn thee back. And I will turn thee back. And put hooks into thy jaws. Now when it says put hooks in your jaws, you have to look at the Middle East and look what armies are not predominantly in certain areas right now. You don't see China in the Middle East that much, do you? He's going to turn these countries back. He's going to do something which China and all the children of Japheth are going to go right to the Middle East with the rest of those armies that, that are there. Read. And I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws. And I will bring thee forth and all thine army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts, sorts of armor, even a great company of bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords. Persia, Ethiopia. Persia, listen, listen to these countries here. Uh, verse 5. Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya with them, all of them with shield and helmet. Gomer and all his bands, the house of Togermah, and the north port of the north quarters, north quarters, and of all the bands and of many people with thee. Be thou prepared and prepare thyself, thou and all thy company that are assembled unto thee. And be thou a guard unto them. After many days shalt thou be visited. In the latter years thou shalt come into the land that is brought back from the sword. Hold up. They will come to the land that is brought back from the sword. Read. And is gathered out of many people. Against, Hold up. That is gathered out of many people. Against the mountains of Israel. Against who? The mountains of Israel. Israel. So why are the nations that are, why are they being assembled at the very end? I thought it was going to Afghanistan and, and get Bin Laden. I thought it was to get go to Syria and get ISIS. See, that's what they're telling you. But the armies are actually being gathered together to come against Israel. Not the Israel we see today, because that Israel we see today is starting trouble. It's talking about the people that was brought back out of captivity, that was scattered, that was placed in a certain place. So the New World Army, the New World Order armies are actually in place to fight against the physical people of Israel. The remnant that's left after the deluge is going to show you. Read. Of uh, the rest of verse 8. Go ahead. Which have been always waste. Which have been what? Always waste. That was always waste. We know that Israel broke the law and was scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. But it is brought forth out of the nations. That, but eventually we will be brought forth out of the nations. So what's happening? The Most High is going to lead us back and we'll have a place, a temporal place in which they can't touch us at first. Eventually, all the other nations are going to stop fighting each other and look at us and say, let's go against them that are in profound quiet, that are being protected. Let's get that scripture real quick. Oh, it's, it's, it's here. It, it's here. Yeah. Read. It's right here. Uh, uh, chapter 38. <laughs> no, no, keep on going. Uh, let me read. Read the 7th and 8th verse. Verse 7. Be thou prepared and prepare thyself and all thy company that are assembled unto thee, and be thou a guard unto them. After many days thou shalt be visited, and the latter days or the latter years, years thou shalt come into the land that is brought back from the sword, and is gathered out of many people against the mountains of Israel, which have been always waste. Which have always been waste. It's speaking about us. To show you that the New World Order armies are not being prepared for the news agenda. What they're telling you. They're trying to get all the armies together first to come against us. That's why they're in Africa, which is the last battleground right now. They're looking to come against us. See, and the Most High is going to save us out of this. It's going to be, this, it's going to be greater than when we came out of Egypt. Through the Red Sea, 
when we, when we had the Red Sea on one side and Pharaoh's army bearing down on us on the other. It's going to be deeper than that. So the kings of the earth are preparing an agenda to totally exterminate the elect of the Most High, the children of God, who are the poor of this earth. Read. But it is brought forth out of the nations, and they shall dwell safely, all of them. It says we shall do what? Dwell safely, all of them. So there will be a, be a safe haven in this earth for a time. Read. Uh, verse 9. Thou shalt ascend and come like a storm. Thou shalt be like a cloud to cover the land. Thou and all thy bands and many people with thee. Thus saith the Most High Power. Thus saith the Most High. It shall come to pass that at the same time shall things come into thy mind. At the same time while you're in the Middle East, something's going to come to the UN's power's minds. The elite power's minds. To do what? And thou shalt think in evil thoughts. And they will think in evil thoughts. To do what? And thou shalt say, I will go to the land of unwalled villages. So obviously Israel is going to be living in the wilderness in unwalled villages like we were coming out of Egypt. Eventually we're going to have unwalled villages. We're going to be dwelling in tents. So they're going to think an evil thought. And thou shalt say, I will go up to the land of unwalled villages. Read. I will go to them that are at rest. I will go to them who are at rest. Read. That dwell safely. All of them dwelling without walls. Without walls. So we will be in the wilderness again. We're going to be driven from our safe havens that we call civilization. The war is going to do that. The war is going to move us. And eventually Israel, a lot of us, is going to make refuge in the same areas we were in when we came out of Egypt. Same areas. Read. And having neither bars nor gates, uh, verse 12, to take a spoil and to take a prey, to turn thine hand upon the desolate places that are now inhabited, and upon the people that are gathered out of the nations which have gotten cattle and goods that dwell in the midst of the land. Verse 13, Sheba and Dedan and the merchant, merchants of Tarshish, with all the young lions thereof, shall say unto thee, Art thou come to take a spoil? Art thou come to take a spoil? Hast thou gathered thy company to take a prey, to carry away silver and gold, and to take away cattle and goods, to take a great spoil? So this is also showing us, brothers and sisters, when we are together, we're not going to be broke. <laughs> We're not going to be suffering and, 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 and thinking about whether or not we can eat from day to day. In the wilderness, we'll be protected. Also, the wealth that the Most High had, have hidden in the earth will be given back. We're going to have goods and all that while the whole earth is in chaos and disarray. Read. Verse 14. Therefore, son of man, Prophesy and say unto God, Thus saith the Lord, Power, and that day when the when my people of Israel dwelleth safely, and that day when the people of Israel dwelleth safety, safely, read, shalt thou not know it? Did you not know that it was the Most High that gathered the, his elect, the righteous, a remnant for himself, for the next kingdom? Did you not know that this was his people? It's enough they didn't beat us down forever. Here it is. We're going to be away from them, not messing with them at all. And they all going to band together with their UN armies to try to destroy us. Read. Verse 15. And thou shalt come from thy place out of the north parts, thou and many people with thee, all of them riding upon horses, a great company, and a mighty army. And thou shalt come up against my people of Israel as a cloud to cover the land, it shall be in the latter days, and I will bring thee against my land, that the heathen may know me, when I shall be sanctified in thee, O God, before their eyes. Before their eyes. Read. Thus saith the Lord Power, Art thou he whom I have spoken in old time by my servant the prophets of Israel, which prophesied in those days many years, 
that I would bring them against, bring thee against them. And it shall come to pass at that same time when God shall come against the land of Israel, saith the Lord power, that my fury shall come up in my face. For in my jealousy and in the fire of my wrath have I spoken. Surely in that day there shall be a great shaking in the land of Israel. Go ahead. So that the fishes of the sea and the fowls of the heaven and the beasts of the field and all creeping things that creep upon the earth and all the men that are upon the face of the earth shall shake at my presence and the mountains shall be thrown down and the steep places shall fall and every wall shall fall to the ground. And I will call for a sword against him throughout all my mountains, saith the Most High Power. Every man's sword shall be against his brother. And I will plead against him with pestilence with and with blood. And I will rain upon him and upon his bands. And upon the many people that are with him, an overflowing rain, and great hailstones, fire, and brimstone. Read. Thus will I magnify myself and sanctify myself, and I will be known in the eyes of many nations, and they shall know that I am the Most High Ahia. Now just imagine this. We are dwelling quietly in all the nations with all their armies and technology and sorcery is saying, you know what? I, we, I think we found the little remnant that escaped the New World Order over there. Let's come up and let's try to go against them and kill them off once and for all. We found them. And at that point, when they have that thought in their mind, the Most High come with total fire and brimstone and the angels show their presence before all of the armies of the nations in the Middle East. Now just imagine that. And then destroy them right off. Let's get the one in, in Edris where it show you that Christ is going to weave himself a mountain. So there will be a remnant there that's going to be protected by the Most High of our people. That through all this, we're going to make, we're going to escape a lot of these cities that have been set up by the New World Order. Keep in mind, brothers and sisters, the cities, these Masonic cities have been set up not by the Most High. They're actual prisons that have been set up by the Masonic Orders. Who are the master builders or the original Masons or the builders of the temples? These were demons. You're not free in these cities. So eventually the Most High is going to break the bonds of our prisons, which, which is the city we're actually captive in, and move us to the wilderness, being protected in profound quiet. Without walls, we're going to be dwelling in tents, totally serving the living God, only calling on one power in the wilderness. While all the other nations are still at war and, and come in together. And as soon as they come together with their one, one world order agenda, they're going to think to fight against us. And that will begin the battle of Armageddon. That's when the angels and they all come and then the battle that Satan have been prepared for in space, that's when it all goes down. So that's the physical aspect of that meeting the heaven, the heavenly battle. Let's read it. Uh, this is 2nd Ezra's chapter 13, verse 48. But those that be left behind of the people are they that are found within my borders. That are found within my border to show you there will be a safe place. 49. Now when he destroyeth the multitude of the nations that are gathered together, <laughs> he shall defend... Boy, boy I, every time I read that, you know, it brings a smile to my face. Why? Because these guys are all jacked up on roids and getting all hype, thinking they, they defended. What country are you defending? All these, it's really one government. You on some, they, they got these, these people in the army on some patriot trip as if you were defending your country. You're not at war with no other country. So what, what are you joining armies for? You're actually joining a satanic elite government that's in place to fight against God's people. So the Most High is allowing you to, to deal in that whole thing. To actually, to, to, you're going to become what the Bible says, bird food. That's what it tell you in Ezekiel. You coming together, getting all jacked up to get into these armies, you're going to be bird food. 
He's going to prepare a big feast for the fowls. I tell you that in Ezekiel. It's going to be all the armies that gather together under the new world order. And at that time, now check this out, even though America is utterly wasted when this all go down, why do you think America put bases all over the earth outside of the country? It, they, um, they know America is going to be destroyed, but they will still have forces that once lived in America, fighting with the UN army now. Read. Uh, verse 49. Now when, when he destroyeth the multitude of the nations that are gathered together, he shall defend his people that remain. Now re read that again. See, that's the UN army right there. That's the UN army written of in scripture. The people that are gathered together is the UN army, the one world order army. Read. Now when he destroyeth the multitude of the nations that are gathered together, he shall defend his people. He shall defend his people. See, the mistake you all are making is believing that the people in Israel today are God's people. It's not speaking of them. It's speaking of the poor. Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, Simeon, Gad, Reuben. Defend his people, the children of Israel. That remain. That remain. And then shall he show them great wonders. Then said I, O Lord, that bearest rule. Show me this. Show me this. Wherefore have I seen the man coming up from the midst of the sea? 52. And he said unto me, Like as thou canst neither seek, seek out, nor know the things that are in the, di the deep of the sea. Let me start a few verses. Let me start up. Yeah. Uh, let me start at verse... Yeah, we're reading Seth Mountain, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, this is verse... 20, I'll start at 21. The interpretation of the vision, this is 2nd Ezra 13, 21. The interpretation of the vision shall I show thee, and I will open thee unto the thing that thou hast required, whereas thou hast spoken of them that are left behind. This is the interpretation. He that shall endure. Now, again, and we broke this down in the academy, that you want to be left behind. Mm -hmm. They make you think in Christianity that left behind is bad, that Christ came and left you because you wasn't a good Christian. No, that's false prophecy. Left behind are those that made it through the one world order's destruction against the elect. These are those that were chosen to make it all, all the way physically through. So you want to be left behind. That means you're here to see the coming of our Lord and Savior. Read. Verse 6, yeah, read the 6th verse. Uh, verse 6. But I beheld and lo, he graved himself a great mountain and flew upon it. It's speaking of Christ. He graved himself a great mountain and flew upon it. But I would have seen the region or the place whereabout the hill was graven, and I could not. And after this I beheld and lo, all they that were gathered together to subdue him were sore afraid and durst fight, and yet durst fight. These are all the nations that when they see Christ, they're going to be afraid, but still they're going to fight him anyway. What the same armies that were gathered that we read in Ezekiel 38. When they see Christ weave himself a mountain before us, they're going to think a thought to come fight against us. And when they come against us, Christ is going to come up and weave himself a mountain. Just imagine a big black guy with a sword and an army of angels behind him. Then they're going, to, they're going to look at each other and say, well, okay. And they're going to fight anyway. Read. Verse 9. And lo, as he saw the violence of the multitude that came, he neither lifted up his hand, nor held sword, nor any instrument of war. But only I saw that he sent out of his mouth as it had been a blast of fire. Mm. And out of his lips a flaming breath. And out of his tongue he... Now, now speaking of the sword, because it tell you in Revelation 19 and 11 that he's coming with a sword. But the sword means destruction. But he will not have a physical sword, but he will use just his mouth to destroy everyone. Read. And out of his tongue he cast out sparks and tempests, and they were all mixed together, the blast of fire, the flaming breath, and the great tempest. This is going to be greater than when we came out of Egypt against Pharaoh. Just imagine, this is, this is not just the Egyptian army, brothers and sisters. This is the world army 
gathered together in the Middle East. Together. Don't forget, all these armies fight for a government that's ruled by a demon. With an agenda to fight against us and our God. They have an, an allegiance to fallen angels. Read. And fell with violence upon the multitude which was prepared to fight. Which was prepared to fight, read. And burned them up on every side. They're going to be burned up on every side. Now, this is not just the Egyptian army here. This is the world army. All nations together. The army all together. That Christ will take down. This is how this deliverance is greater than the Egyptian deliverance. Here. Read. So that upon a sudden of an innumerable multitude, nothing was to be perceived, but only dust and the smell of smoke. When I saw this, I was hold afraid. Up, hold up. Go ahead, what you got? So this blast out of Christ's mouth. Yes. Is that the lightning that will be seen? You know what it says, as the lightning from the east to the west, when Christ returns? Now let's talk about his return in itself. Because it tells you that he, it, it says it's darkness and there's no light in it. So in the midst of them coming against us, it's going to, it's going to be totally black at first. Mm -hmm. This is when it comes back though, isn't it? Yeah. So isn't it the same thing? Yeah, it's the same thing, but th this is him on the scene now. Yeah. We want to see him come as lightning first. Mm -hmm. Every eye shall see. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be total darkness and no light in it. Dense darkness and then light. And then he's going to come weave himself a mountain and everyone's going to see him with all the angels behind him ready to defend us. So you don't want to be on in, in that army that he's against right here. Uh, and they tell you they're going to fight anyway. They show you, what, I don't know what type of psychotics they're going to be giving some of these people. But they're going to be fight. They're going to look to fight anyway. Go ahead. Uh, verse eleven. And they were all mixed together: the blast of fire, the flaming breath, and the great tempest. And fell with violence upon the multitude which was prepared to fight, and burnt them up on them, and burnt them up every one. So that upon a sudden of an innumerable multitude, nothing was to be perceived but only dust and smell of smoke. When I saw this, I was now, afraid. And, and, and now, 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 that's an entry. Now, if you're going to come on a scene, now, that's an entry right there. That's an entry. Right? Read. Oh, verse 12. Afterwards, I saw the same man come down from the mountain and call unto him another peaceable multitude. And there was much people unto him, whereof some were glad, some were sorry, some of them were bound, and other some brought of them that were offered. Then was I sick through great fear, and I awaked and said, Thou hast showed me, thou hast showed thy servant these wonders from the beginning, and hast counted me worthy that thou shouldest receive my prayer. Show me now yet the interpretation of this dream, for as I conceive in my understanding, woe unto them that be left in those days. And, and much and more... Go ahead. And much more woe unto them that are not left behind. Much more woe to them that are what? Not left behind. That are not left behind. So they're trying to teach you in the Christian church it's wrong or it's a bad thing if you're left behind. It's more woe to them that are not left behind. You want to be left behind. That means you see the coming of our Lord and Savior. Now what I would need you to check out here. Once the Most High destroyed all the armies of the earth together, what does that mean for us? We're free. That means no, no country have a standing army. We're free. Totally free. See, and that's how you link up the New World Order agenda, give the mindset of what's happening in, in the earth according to the one world agenda and one world order and culminated with the understanding of the coming of Christ. You have to understand world events and what the agenda of the governments are and who's controlling the government. And without, without these key elements, you have no, no concept at all concerning prophecy. So it's important to understand characters of the book 
and where they stand in the earth today. That's why we identify Israel. Okay? Because according to the Most High, according to the Bible, at the very end, all the armies will fight against those of us who have escaped. All right? And we also let people, brothers and sisters, know, don't get caught up into the political arena and talking down and coming against the president and all and the governments, because why? They're just figureheads. Our battle is not with them. They're just people that can come and go. They mean nothing. Our battle is against the gods of this world that control your politicians. That's our battle. And we pray against them and we pray that our father send Yeshua as soon as possible to judge. But we know there is some time. A few more things must happen before all armies come against us in the wilderness. The mark of the beast and the fall of Babylon. The great earthquake in Babylon. The mark of the beast. And the total destruction of Babylon by Iran. Once these three, these three things happen, Christ is on his way. Because that's when we're already in the wilderness. And the nations, the UN armies that have set themselves up, up over there. That's when they're already in place. In Africa, in Persia, in Libya. All the places we've seen in Ezekiel 37. And if you notice, a lot of the areas that we've actually read in Ezekiel 38, excuse me, are the same nations, Libya and all that, that America went into to try to put their governments in. Why? Because they're going to use those armies they've established in Libya and different places. Even Persia is going to be a part of it after the destruction of Babylon. Who is Persia? Iran. Yes. After Iran take out America, Iran is going to be with the armies against us too. Mm -hmm. So we have to stay prayed up in the spirit of the Most High under his shadow and understand that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. And keep in mind, brothers and sisters, that it's only through the grace of the Most High we are protected in this world. So the key part, the key, key point I want you to get from this all of you out there, it's let's stay under the shadow of the Most High. Let's keep, let's keep our vessels whole and let's, let's keep these commandments and stay protected and linked in with each other. So that, so that it's us in that wilderness being protected in due time. With that, I'm going to answer a few questions.